Welcome back to now the second episode of the UK Dental School series. My name is Aryan, I'm a first year dental student studying at the University of Dundee and this video is going to be all about the University of Birmingham. So I've got Dr. Hero who has actually just graduated from Birmingham to talk to you guys about her experience at Birmingham and she will give you an insight into the dentistry program at Birmingham. If you're considering Birmingham as a potential dental school to go to, then make sure you keep watching to the end of this video because she's going to be covering a lot of details about dentistry at Birmingham. And the things she'll be covering in this video is actually what you need to know about the University of Birmingham. So hopefully when you do get an interview and you get asked why do you want to come to Birmingham, then you can you know, impress the interviewer and you can talk about all these things that you've learned from this video and then just impress the interviewer. So hopefully you get your offer from Birmingham. So, a couple of things before we start. I'm going to put timestamps in the video and also in the description below and also as a pinned comment in the comment section. And then secondly, Dr. Hira has her own Instagram page. So I'm going to put the link to her Instagram page down in the description below. So make sure you check out her Instagram page and follow her on Instagram. So I'm now going to pass you over to Dr. Hira who's going to talk to you all about the University of Birmingham. So coming up now, Dr. Hira. Hi guys, my name's Hira and I have recently just qualified from the University of Birmingham as a dentist. Um, I remember I started my journey into dentistry five years ago, so back in 2015. Prior to that I applied to four different universities, so Manchester, Birmingham, Liverpool and Sheffield. I ended up getting um, interviews for Sheffield, Liverpool and Birmingham and was eventually given an offer from Liverpool and Birmingham. So when I applied I was dead set on going to Liverpool actually um, but then ended up doing a complete U-turn and choosing Birmingham instead. So a little bit more about me, um, I'm 23 years old and I come from a small town near Manchester called Rochdale. For A-levels I studied biology, chemistry and psychology in which I got two A's and an A star. Um, I remember doing my UK CAT, but that was such a long time ago, so four, not four, five or six years ago now. And I did better than average, which was good, but luckily for me at the time, Birmingham wasn't really looking at UK CAT, so that's only a new um, feature for applying to Birmingham. Um, obviously because the course is so competitive and yeah it wasn't the best time of my life. UK CAT was pretty difficult to study for because it was such a unique um, exam slash test that I'd ever done so um, my best recommendation for that is just keep practicing. Timing's probably the biggest issue so get practicing with timing and just do as many practice questions as you can. Now that I've qualified I am hopefully going to start working in September on the Telford scheme which is in the West Midlands and I'm really really excited. Very nervous because I haven't seen a patient since March but we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. So what made me interested in dentistry? That's actually a really good question because initially for me I was so dead set on going into a career in medicine. Um, for me I wanted to go into a career where I could help people but also into a surgical career where I could utilise my manual dexterity and save lives. It wasn't actually until um, I did a bit more work experience in the area of medicine that I realised it wasn't really for me and it was actually my mum and funnily enough my optometrist who recommended dentistry and at first I was kind of like nah not for me but actually when I did a bit more career exploration it turned out to be the perfect career for me um, there's just something about like seeing patients so regularly um, building that relationship with them, that rapport, but also working so coherently with a team, um, especially a nurse. It almost became like a family and that's what really drew me into dentistry. And then obviously as I started my dental career um, and university experience, I just found that I absolutely enjoyed working with teeth. Um, just the ideologies behind dentistry and how much um, teeth mean to people and how it can psychologically affect a person's confidence and self-esteem and how much we actually change lives. So it was really important to me to get that career exploration so that I knew for certain that I was going into a career that I was gonna love. And luckily I am and will hopefully find out when I start my DFT in September. 
So what drew me to my chosen university, which was Birmingham, um, so it wasn't actually until I got my interview that I realised that they were building a brand new dental hospital. And for those of you guys who've been fortunate enough to actually have a look, it's honestly the most beautiful building. It's so modern, so new, so non-claustrophobic. And what I mean by that is very airy. There's lots of windows, lots of natural light and the facilities themselves are incredible. So we've got a brand new Phantom Head lab suite where we practice on plastic models as most people do when they go to dental school. And honestly, the actual building itself is just so beautiful and I adore it. And it's in such a good location as well. So for those of you who will be going in 2020, you'll realize that there's a costa nearby, which I'm super jealous of because that used to be my old haunt. Um, and the actual university campus itself, so the university is a campus, it's not spread out all over the place, and it's in Edgbaston, and honestly it's the most beautiful campus. Proper red brick buildings, and the crown and glory is my favourite part of the um, campus, which is Old Joe, which is the world's largest freestanding clock tower. But yeah, Birmingham is such a beautiful, beautiful city, and a lot of people don't really see the beauty in it, but I it's become my second home and I can't imagine not being there anymore and I'm really going to miss it. But honestly, if you've never been, I would definitely recommend going to visit. You've got things like Cadbury's World, you've got the world's largest Primark there now, um, the Bull Ring is honestly iconic and then you've got Grand Central as well which has got so many food places so it's absolutely fantastic and it's so easy to travel to and from Birmingham so transport is quite cheap compared to other places and it's so easy to get trains back home so for me I was going quite regularly back home to Manchester and that was only achievable, achievable because of the good transport links from Birmingham. So with regards to the course structure I'm not going to lie, it's quite hectic. So in your first year, it's mostly lecture based and you're based at the medical school and it's modules which include an introduction to biological sciences, um, which is like your biomed, biosciences type module. Then you do a lot of modules on the head and neck, um, digestive, renal systems and heart and lungs and then you've also got one day a week which is spent at the dental hospital where you're doing dental hospital modules such as the psychology behind dentistry and dental public health and that kind of thing and you also get the chance to observe all the years whilst they're um, seeing their own patients and you get to practice on each other so you take impressions and do basic periodontal exams or BPEs and um, exams on them. And then when you get to your second year, you have two days based at the medical school and the rest are based at the dental hospital. And again, the modules build up from the modules in first year. So there's one kind of very hectic and very full on module called CFB or craniofacial biology. And it's literally everything head and neck. It's probably um, a, quite a difficult one and people find that one really difficult. I know I did, but with time and um, revision, honestly, it was such a breeze to get through um, and really, really useful because at the end of the day, you need to know this part of the body, especially in full detail in order to study dentistry. So when you're not based at the medical school, you continue teaching at the dental hospital and this is when you start to become a bit more clinical. Um, it was during term six actually that you start practicing on phantom heads. I know now since I've left the university and for the younger years, you start to see patients a lot sooner. So at the end of second year now, and it's just for basic things like um, exams, BPs, sending them off for x-rays, etc. And then when you get to third year, that's when you start seeing patients properly and you can do anything on them except for endos and crown preps because obviously you've got to do your competency tests for those. Um, and that's done on the simulation course, which is done on Phantom Head. So you practice endodontics and crown preps, bridge preps, that kind of thing. Um, so you're doing all those and you still have some modules at the medical school. Um, so an introduction to human diseases, which is trying to like build, bridge the gap between medicine and dentistry and showing you how things that go wrong with the body can also affect the mouth and your oral health, which is quite important. And then you get to fourth year, um, 
So during your third year, you were doing your basic um, dentistry. So learning about prosthetics, um, cosmetic dentistry, so conservative dentistry, like your fillings and perio and oral surgery. So you would be taking out teeth once you pass your competency test. Fourth year, you build up on this. So you start um, paediatric teaching and ortho teaching as well as endodontic specialty teaching. And that's when you get some more time dedicated to those specialties and you treat exclusively paediatric patients on peds and endodontic patients on endo specialty teaching. Um, you also have further teaching on dental public health and psychology behind dentistry and more teaching at the medical school as well. And then once you get to your fifth year, the focus is on um, getting your requirements for finals, practicing for finals and getting you ready for dental um, real life dentistry really and it's quite an exciting time it's it's very hectic but it's actually during this time that you get the opportunity to pick a special study module so i was fortunate enough to be chosen to do the perio special study module where i was able to um, do periodontal surgeries lift flaps that kind of thing but there's also many other special study modules that people can choose and that can be found on the website as well. So I won't go too much into that. And also in your fourth year, you are given the opportunity to do an elective project as well. And that's quite an exciting time. So people jet off across the world and do some really incredible research and you have the opportunity then to present that and win prizes for it, which is quite an exciting day for people. So the teaching style at Birmingham, so it's heavily based on lectures. We have um, smaller group teachings or SGTs, which are like mini seminars. And in those, it can be any format. So you might be asked to create a presentation and present to the rest of the class. It might be PBL based, so problem based learning, where you're given a um, scenario and then you've got to go away and think about the answers and then present that to the rest of the group. Um, and then when you get to the more clinical aspects of it, that's done on Phantom Head and it's in smaller group teachings, but you still have lectures throughout the five years. It's only when you come to your fifth year, really, that you stop having as many lectures. So the lectures are there to basically be your foundation and you build up on that with the smaller group teachings. Um, so we've got some brilliant facilities. So back when you're in your first and second year, you have the anatomy rooms in um, the medical school, which is um, subject to the Human Tissue Act, which you'll learn more about because they're actual real specimens and you're put into smaller groups and you get to investigate those. And then you also get the opportunity to visit the Prosectorium where you see real life cadavers which is honestly incredible. Um, I would definitely recommend eating before going into there because you don't want to faint and the formaldehyde, which is what they spray to keep the cadavers quite fresh, does make you feel very hungry, which is really strange, but very true. Um, so you've got that. And then when you're in the dental hospital, so it's brand new, brand new lecture theatres, everything's recorded for the lecture. So you can always go back to them and refer to them. And you've also got the previous year's recorded lectures as well to access. We've got um, e-learning platform. So for our university, it's Canvas and a lot of videos, um, lecture notes, PDFs, PowerPoints, anything that you could wish and imagine for is on there. So it's really easy to access. Um, and then we've got some brand new um, phantom head suites, which is where we do our um, bread and butter dentistry, really, where you practice um, how to do fillings, hold a drill, and you get to practice on each other and take impressions, that kind of thing. We've also got um, iPads that are given to you in your second year, I believe it is. So, and that's used for um, anything to do with dentistry. It's where we do our reflections for when we've been on clinics on this app called CAF. So it was created by um, the University of Birmingham. And I believe some of the universities might be using them as well. Um, and there's loads of other apps that we recommend downloading, so like things like the BNF, um, the Scottish Dental Effectiveness Clinical Program Guidelines, so SDSEP, um, which is incredible. Um, so yeah, loads and loads of facilities. We've got a dental school library as well, which has got all the books that you could need for dentistry and loads of computers and things to do work on as well, which is brilliant. So there's really, really good facilities. Teaching is great. We're taught by world-class clinicians um, who have flown all over the world, who have been various members of different bodies, such as the 
BDA or the BSP, for example. So yeah, you're never really alone and um, the school itself has got a great welfare system as well. So if you ever have any issues, then you've got people to go to as well, which is really, really helpful because dentistry at the end of the day can be really, really stressful. So. So clinical activity, so this has changed actually a lot since I first started all those many five years ago now. So um, in your first year, obviously, because you're waiting to be cleared from occupational health and for things like hepatitis B, HIV, Hep C, that kind of thing, you can only really observe until you've been cleared. So first year is mainly about observing older cl clinicians and dental students on clinics. And then obviously once you're cleared, you're able to then help with um, nursing those students. You practice on each other as well. So the first years, um, this year we're taking impressions on each other, doing basic um, exams and BPEs, that kind of thing. And um, when you get to second year, you see you start to become a lot more clinical. You practice on each other first. So you take impressions again, um, you practice LA on each other. So um, one of my best friends actually did my local anesthetic. And funnily enough, I've just received a reminder actually that it was three years ago to this very day that she did my first um, local in my mouth. It was um, terrifying, but also a brilliant day. Um, and then you practice drilling, fillings, and extractions on phantom heads. So with um, extractions, we've got phantom heads that are based in the oral surgery department and you practice with the forceps. Obviously, it's a lot easier to take out plastic teeth, uh, but you're taught the techniques and things that you need to know for when you do go on to oral surgery and you've got to pass competency tests to then be deemed competent to carry these out in patients. Um, in your second year, so towards the end of it, in term six, that's when they then now start to get patients. And again, it's just doing basic exams, taking histories and doing BPEs. Um, you then get to take x-rays after having some x-ray teaching. And that's mainly done in your end of second year, third year. So in your third year, you get your patients and you see them for, throughout the rest of your clinical time at Birmingham. You can do anything on them as long as you've passed your competency tests. So fillings, um, extractions, and then you can start to do crowns and endodontics on them during, um, I think it's the second term of third year now, or it might be even earlier than that. And that's when you have more phantom head teaching on um, doing endodontics, so root canal treatment and um, crown preps. And once you've passed the competency tests for those, you can do those on patients as well. It's also in your third year that you have specialty teaching. So you have conservative specialty teaching, periodontic specialty teaching, prosthetics and oral surgery. And you're timetabled onto those and that's when you do those specialties. So for prosthetics, you either find your own patients or you're given patients who need dentures and you do that denture patient on that clinic and you're helped by um, specialists in prosthetics prosthodontics teaching so you're in a smaller group then but you have a lot more intimate teaching and that's the same for oral surgery for conservative dentistry and for perio it's when you get to fourth year then that you finish doing these and then you start on paediatric teaching orthodontic teaching and endodontic specialty teaching you continue on your oral surgery as well and it's during fourth year that you can actually undertake your own minor oral surgery and this is a requirement so you're taught how to suture how to raise a flap and then you do this with one of the oral surgery tutors and clinicians and it's honestly so much fun so for those of you who like the oral surgery and surgical aspect it'll be actually a really really fun time you also get um, some experience in an actual hospital as well so um, I went to the QE which is right next to the medical school and was fortunate enough to shadow um, the Maxvax team there and actually help in their surgeries so that's part of one of the modules in fourth year um, it's part of clinical human diseases or CHD and again it's one of those that helps bridge the gap between medicine and dentistry and like connecting them out to the whole body essentially um, fourth year as well um, you get the opportunity to, to undertake an elective um, project if you choose to do one you don't have to do one but if you don't you have to do a project back at the university and you can catch up on things that you've missed out on during clinics um, and then when you get to fifth year 
and during your fourth year people have started outreach clinics so you get to go to different clinics across Birmingham um, quite easy to access and you do paediatric um, outreach clinics and um, adult outreach clinics and it's with two other people or just one other person and it's a re real opportunity to get stuck in and with more complex patients who require a bit more care and more time but also complex treatment as well and it's really a time for you to be a bit more independent whilst you're on clinics instead of having to be on a whole um, clinic full of bays and waiting and queuing for your tutor or clinician so yeah it's a really really um, hectic schedule and you get a lot of support throughout it so it's not really any, um, anything to be worried about and you always get the opportunity to keep on practicing and that's what's brilliant about Birmingham you have such dedicated tutors and it's honestly um, probably term six during my second year was one of the most fun terms I've ever had and I will really look back on it fondly because it's when I really got to grips with dentistry and the clinical side of it. So with regards to assessments of Birmingham, it's heavily assessed. Um, they are always looking to cut down on it, which they have, and they are continuing to cut down on it. So in first year you have, um, it's all MCQs basically, and that's done in January. And then you do some more again in March, I believe it is. And then after that, you're kind of free to go home and have a nice summer. The last long summer break you get before doing the rest of the dental course. Then in second year, again, MCQ based, but with CFB, the module that I mentioned earlier, you have a viva or um, a spoken oral test. And it's basically you're given like an, an object or um, an anatomical figure and you've got to just speak about it to the anatomy tutor and they ask you questions based on it. Um, and again, the rest of the year is then MCQ based. Third year, you've got competency tests in order to be deemed competent to carry out filling. So it's something called the class two or the amalgam test. And you've got to do a class two restoration and fill it with amalgam. And this is just a way of um, assessing your fine motor skills, how you handle the drill to make sure you don't hit the adjacent teeth and you can actually do amalgam fillings and not um, break the marginal ridge. And for those of you who study at Birmingham, you'll know the absolute terrors of breaking the marginal ridge, which is so frustrating. Again, the rest of the year is then MCQs and they're kind of dotted around all over the place. So um, you have some, I believe it's in November or October time, and then you have more after that in Feb and again in May when you have an OSCE. These are testing skills that you've learned during your time on clinics and things include taking x-rays so positioning the x-ray holder and communication stations as well as um, different materials that you use in um, clinics as well and then this is again replicated in your fourth year so you're doing um, mcqs again for the modules and then um, an oski again it's when you get to fifth year then that you have your finals so you've got some mcqs before christmas and that's to supplement any teaching that you've had so peds ortho and oral med and radiography um, mcqs and then after january that's when written finals are so they were moved to be a bit earlier for our year and it worked quite nicely as well um so you have written finals and they're no longer mcq so um for birmingham it's a case of you get two papers so paper one is a written long answer paper so it's not essay based so you can bullet point during them but they require a longer answer and it's structured and then paper two which is a shorter answer question paper so it's just um, filled with shorter answer questions and you're expected to write literally a word or a sentence for them and then after that you've got your case presentation and your unseen case so case presentation is when you present one of the patients that you've seen during your three years on clinics and um you show pre-op and then post-op and then unseen case is when you go into the room and it's a patient you've never seen before and you're expected to take a full history, examine them and come up with a diagnosis and treatment plan and then you go and have a viva based off that or a spoken oral test and they ask you questions and ask about your opinions and what you thought about the patient, the diagnosis and treatment plan etc. So yeah, the five years at dental school are quite heavily examined but they're there to make sure that you're a safe beginner and that you're competent and that you know your basics. 
and it's really important that you remember that even if you fail one of them you always have the opportunity to reset um and if you fail that reset then then you have depending on how well how close you were to passing you have the opportunity to redo the year but very few people have to redo the year and they do put good provisions in place for you should you need to do that so just finishing up now um final thoughts on um my university experience so for me i wouldn't change anything about my university experience i'm so so glad that i chose birmingham um it's such a brilliant dental school very very world renowned the school itself is a brand new building it's in a beautiful area and campus is absolutely incredible so if you haven't checked it out i would recommend going and checking the campus out and speaking to other students there um in terms of things like nightlife there's a great nightlife um there's so many societies to join um you do have a lot of free time in your first year so that is the time to make most of really and when you get to fifth year you do get more free time as well to spend on clinics um, the teaching at Birmingham, so for those of you who like lectures, you'll enjoy the teaching at Birmingham, which is also supplemented then by smaller group teaching, so to consolidate any knowledge that you were uncertain or unsure of. Um, just generally, the university is fab. We've got a brilliant dental student society called BUDS, which is the oldest dental society in the world, I believe, and it's been going on for since the... I want to say 1800s but don't quote me on that one and uh, it was something that I was a part of and they hold regular um, socials and they're now looking to be a bit more academic so holding more lectures and networking opportunities um, as well as that you've got you get to know people within the other years quite intimately as well so the year size for ours was 72 to begin with and then we ended up with 68 because of people um, intercalating or dropping down a year and um, yeah it's a real opportunity to get to know people in the older and younger years and you get to make that bond and as well as that the staff are incredible so we've got a really excellent dedicated school office team who are happy to help with any timetabling issues any welfare issues but you get to know the staff really well as well so you get to know the clinicians and when you're on um clinics you end up having like clinic meals with the rest of the people on your clinics and the staff as well and you get to know them really well and it's just a really inclusive dental school and yeah i couldn't recommend it highly enough i'm really really gonna miss it actually and I can see myself definitely going back at some point. The staff there are amazing, the specialists at what they, what they do. Um, the clinics are really, really big and spread out and you see a massive variety of patients. So um, you get the opportunity as well to do um, sedation training. So we got the opportunity to cannulate each other and try a bit of the um, Entonox or laughing gas, which was quite a fun day. And then you get to treat patients under sedation as well. It doesn't make you fully qualified to do sedation, but it gives you an insight into that. So there's just some unique things about Birmingham that make it just that little bit better as well so things like sedation training you get the opportunity to go to hospitals you get the opportunity to go on outreach clinics um, staff do so much research so they have the opportunity to do research with them should you choose to in your spare time um, join societies which can take you worldwide i know a couple of my friends who are in the year above um, were on a knowledge and skills exchange um, society and it took them to melbourne in australia so you can go far and wide with it really it's what you put into dental school and if you make the most of it you'll really really thrive and it'll be some of the best years of your life so i hope that was helpful um i just want to thank you for listening to me waffle on a bit and i hope you get everything that you want when you apply to dental schools and have a great time um if you ever need to reach me i'm easily available on instagram um and that'll be put in the uh, youtube link and yeah good luck and enjoy your summers all right so that brings us to the end of this video hopefully you found this video useful and you actually learned something new about the university of birmingham if you did find the video useful please let me know by liking this video and also commenting below and if you haven't subscribed to the channel already please consider doing so it would really help me out but yeah take care stay safe and i will see you in the next video bye now